I'm Vanessa Warwick of the Headbangers Ball at MTV Europe, reporting from the Iron Maiden album launch party in London. Now, as you can probably see behind me, the party takes the theme of a fun fair. And as you check out the various different sideshows, you get to hear Iron Maiden's brand new album, Fear of the Dark, which is going to be released on the 12th of May in the States. Now, the album was recorded at Steve Harris's home studio in Essex, and Steve also gets the co-production credit for the first time, along with longtime Maiden collaborator Martin Birch. Now, another notable thing about Fear of the Dark is that it's the first Iron Maiden album to feature the writing talent of guitarist Yannick Gares. And in fact, he co-wrote the first single, Be Quick or Be Dead, with Bruce Dickinson, and a very aggressive track it is too. Now, I'm going to go and track down some members of the band to find out more, so we'll be back here at the party in a little while. I'm now joined by Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden. Hi, Bruce. How are you doing? I do, I'm very well. You caught me at a good time. I'm sober. Excellent. Are you, are you enjoying the party? Uh, almost. Uh, after this interview, then I won't be sober, and I'll be enjoying it even more. Excellent. Now, could you give, give us a little preview of uh, the new album, Fear of the Dark, for the Headbangers Ball viewers in America? Yes, it's absolutely brilliant, and it's uh, the best album we've ever made. Uh, it will, uh, if you put it on the front of a train, you can expect it to tunnel through from New York uh, to Los Angeles in about uh, 0.6 minutes. And uh, if you were to stick it on the San Andreas Fault, then half of California would slide into the ocean. Sounds good to me. All right. And uh, Yannick Gerd contributed songwriting for the first time. What kind of difference has that made? Uh, well, uh, Brian, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, the uh, the main thing is is that he's an astounding guitarist, and he plays so much from the heart and so much soul and fire that the band has been revitalised. It's like reinventing the wheel. This is the new Iron Maiden going to come and like tear people up till the year 2000. And there you go, everything in a nutshell. I'll be talking to Iron Maiden some more a little later on. Steve Harris of Iron Maiden is still with me in London uh, and uh, there's somebody else here as well, um, Frankenstein from Transylvania. Um, so he's pretty terrifying actually. I think uh, an album track's going to start up in the background but uh, Steve, could you t tell us a little bit about the lyrics on the new album because they um, embrace kind of far more realistic and down-to-earth subjects than before, don't they? Um, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, a lot of it's down to Bruce writing sort of socially aware songs or whatever. Um, I tend to write from sort of imagination, fantasy, whatever, so blame him. <laughs> <laughs> and the album is released in America on the 12th of May. Is there going to be a single forthcoming? Yeah, April the 13th. Only in Europe, no, not in America. Don't release singles in America. Why not? Well, they don't buy them, they don't play them, so why bother? OK, and uh, very quickly, what are your tour plans over the next uh, few months? Uh, we start touring in June, a uh, couple of warm-ups in Reykjavik, in Iceland, which is a contradiction in terms, I suppose, and uh, America, South America, Monsters of Rock. <laughs> yeah. I think he likes me. Monsters of Rock, yeah, all right. He looks like a monster of rock, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, OK. Well, um, good luck with everything, and thanks for taking time out of your party to talk to us. Today is the international release of the new Maiden album. <laughs> well, I better not do that, so you guys can take a look. Cool. Um, now, this is called Fear of the Dark. Yep. So and um, I've heard that, well, Bruce said when No Prayer for the Dying came out that he felt it was the heaviest since uh, Number of the Beast. How do you feel about this one? Um, yeah, this album actually, it's, it's, the songs, there's some real heavy stuff on there, but there's a lot of mood and I try to create a lot of uh, different feels, you know, there's, and there's a lot of melody over the top of it, you know, yeah, it still retains the, the, the raw Iron Maiden sound. It's a really yeah. mature album, there's some fantastic uh, song ideas on there. I'm very proud of it. The sound of this album is really 90s. The last one we went in and we did it live and it was kind of, it was a bit like back to the roots kind of thing. It was spontaneous and everything. But this one spent a bit of time with the sound and made it a bit more bigger. I'm really pleased with it. It Excited. sounds great. We think it does too. Be Quick or Be Dead is a killer, killer tune. And what we're going to be doing here is taking calls from you any minute now, but we're going to play a video first. And uh, the, the number is 1-800. 265 much which is 6824 and please please dial very carefully we're going to come back in a minute but first we're going to play a video that you guys wanted to see yeah. holy smoke from no prayer for the dying
It's the Pepsi Power 30 live with Iron Maiden in the studio, and I think we have our first call, and we have a few fans outside too, <laughs> of Yannick Gers and Dave Murray in the studio. <laughs> okay, we've got Mark on the line, Mark from Edmonton, Alberta. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, um, in 85, 86, for the World Slavery Tour, you guys had major theatrics. Are you going to go ahead with those again this year? Um, yeah, we're going to come back with production. Um, it'll be based on the album. And uh, we've done a couple of tours somewhere in time past, they, they got mega, you know, yeah. theatrics, you know, inflatable castles and everything. So we took it as far as it could go, but we feel like this time it'd be good to get a production going, lights and all that stuff. Yeah, the last yeah. album was very back to basics, so this time there's a lot more imagery involved with this one, isn't there? Mm. So we're just going to try, you know, there'll be a bigger production this time. But the last album, it was right to go back to basics and put the band back in front. Because before I think the, the band had been hidden by the overblown production that they had, and now the band is, it's so hot, it was really important to get the band back at the front of the stage. But we probably take a bigger production out this time. Mm. I think that's right. Yeah. Michelle, okay, Michelle in Creston, BC. Go ahead, Michelle. <laughs> Hello. My question is, since you've been going for uh, over 20 years now, uh, is there anything that you felt you've had to compromise to keep up with the time? Well, yeah. after going for wait, 20 years, so that's 20. quite a while. Um, I think probably more like 15 or 16, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it hasn't been quite 20 Yeah, we'll probably reach the year 2000. Oh, yeah. It'll probably be like 20 years, on, on, I hope. Mm. Um, yeah, I think the, the success of the band is doing like, you know, touring, albums, tour, that sort of thing. We're still going to be going. Lots of albums. Yeah, we'll have wheelchairs. Yeah, we'll have, yeah. We'll be yeah. 90. New material we'll be, all yeah. the time. Yeah. When we're 90, we're going to be have the wheelchairs and we'll be <laughs> yeah. wheeling about the stage going, With a little Run Iron Maidens coming along. Exactly. That's it, yeah. We'll have like pyros, pyros coming out the back. And, you now, know, the thing is, we've just yeah. got a, a real enthusiasm for playing live and basically that's it. We, we really love playing live. And, and that hasn't changed. Yeah, from mm. now, I'm, only, I'm only new in the band. I've been there two years now, but the, when, we, when we do gigs, everyone is so excited. That, that's what we do it for. Okay. Let's throw to a couple of the videos that you wanted to see and uh, Guns N' Roses. Oh, Led Zeppelin, I think we only have time for. So let's check it out. Led oh, Zeppelin yeah. on Power 30 and we'll be back. Wee. Yay. <laughs> back with Iron Maiden on the Power 30. We're going straight to a phone call here from Kelly and Christine in Calgary, Alberta. Go ahead. Um, hi, we were wondering, out of every place you've ever played, what's been your favorite and why? Oh, that's a so tough many one. <laughs> yeah, um, everywhere is good for different reasons. You just, you, you know, you try and it's just good to play. Yeah. You can't pick a. I think Donnie Night yeah, I was at the gig and I watched Dave and the Boys, and I think that was a pinnacle, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the band special. Where was that? At uh, Donington. Donington. Yeah. Oh. But I think each, sure. each, you know, show you do it's special to the, the you know, the, the fan that comes to the show. And for you, you kind of just put, put on, you know, put the best performance you can that night. So each show has a little bit of magic in itself. And um, so to have one particular, maybe Donington, is that, that could be it. Oh, it's happening. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Sorry Thank you, that. Kelly and Christine. Cheers, Cheers Kelly. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Um, <laughs> Stay there. We're coming to the end of the show, unfortunately. It goes by fast, doesn't it? And we're going to play your new video, but let's talk a little bit about it. Uh, Yannick, you co-wrote it with Bruce Dickinson? Yeah, it's quite a topical thing. It's about, it's about corruption and big business. And it's something that the band, you know, it's been around. We see it happening, the BCCI thing, uh, Robert Maxwell, you know, the, the problems that came out of his death. And uh, it just generally goes on. There's a lot of corruption and big business, and that's so what the song's about. So it's be quick or be dead, like, you better get them well, before they get you kind yeah, of thing? A, yeah, it's kind of, there's a lot of insider dealing and stuff that goes on, we all know about. You know, it's all there. It. You can't, you can't, but it's always the little people who tend to get caught for those things, and the big people who make millions and billions get yeah. away with it. Yeah, I was reading through the lyrics, and there aren't, you know, a lot of, like, mythical beasts and old English literature, things like that. It seems to be about the real world. Yeah, it's more about current affairs, really. Um, there's a few songs that talk about things that happened last couple of years, really. And whereas, yeah, it's not to say in the future we may go back into that, you know, that sort of, you know, writing stuff about 
books and hey, there's no rules stuff. you know it's music we can do what we like yeah. so it's fun to just go off on a tangent uh, uh, that's the thrill of it yeah. there's no EMI or any company Sony or anybody telling us what to do we just do it and give them it and it's up to them to put it out you know there's no direction from an outside source we just do what we feel yeah. is right we've got actually a broad base to work yeah. on we can you know and go spread ourselves out over a lot of things we're not kind of stifled just right. channeled in one thing so right. you know that's that's the beauty I think of it all yeah. all right let's check it out be quick or be dead the new one from Iron Maiden and thank you very much both thank of you, you Dave and Yannick for joining thank us you. Today. Cheers. thanks a lot Iron Maiden Bruce Dickinson in the house how you doing man good to see you Welcome. How you doing? I'm doing Good to have fine. You here. I'm, you, you've actually been in this building uh, a lot of the day today because you were next door doing yeah, tomorrow night's yeah, headbangers. Three hours right? sleep. Yeah. <laughs> doing a, good on three hours. Yeah, sleep. I'm yeah. sure it's a good. You and Nico uh, are doing headbangers for tomorrow, isn't that right? Uh, yeah, tomorrow night. Right. Uh, in fact, we'll be we'll be a mile high. So yeah. to speak, in yeah. Denver. Yeah. <laughs> Something like uh, that. Yeah. So you're out of here and going to Denver, continuing uh, we're the tour. We're going to Denver tonight, actually. Right. I've got to be on the radio at midnight. So. Right. So it's going well, and in the in the video, um, uh, wasting t wasting love is uh, the the tattooed thing. I want to ask you about. This is a guy who apparently has been uh, with a lot of women. Is that the idea of the song? Sort yeah, of the idea of pretty like. Pretty much. So the the, the director is the same guy that did the uh, the uh, the Nirvana uh, uh, video, and we decided right. to give him a shot at doing ours. And he he came up with this great idea. Now he wanted to. I mean, obviously, he's trying to take the whole thing a little bit more towards the idea of, look, this guy is getting wasted in right. terms of himself because of all the stuff that he's... All the guilt he's laid on himself, you know, going to bed with all these people yeah. that maybe he didn't Increasingly love. dangerous thing to do these days. It's pretty life-threatening, yeah, yeah, I exactly. would say, yeah. Which is another track, um, Fear is the Key, on the, on the record right, that deals yeah. specifically with AIDS, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. And then was that the Freddie Mercury thing kind of inspired that, or...? No, the... It, the Freddie Mercury thing happened in the middle of it while I was writing the, the words. Yeah. And um, the line in the song that was about that is, nobody cares till somebody famous dies, which is what, uh, yeah. something that came up with the whole Magic Johnson thing, yeah. uh, which is, I mean, it's tragic. When it, any, unfortunately, it's true, it, but, yeah. But it is. I mean, people have been dying of it for years, and everybody's been like, oh, well, I don't know anybody, so... Mm -hmm. um, but... Um, Anyway, so that's, yeah. that was that particular song, yeah. Now, in fact, um, in the piece we ran before the video, we had a little bite of you talking about how the, the songs on this album are probably more, I don't know if you'd say topical, maybe, you know, uh, have to do with sort of current things that people real. are talking about these days. They're more real. Real world yeah. type of things. I mean, the thing is, we, we made a name for ourselves when we first started out writing a lot of songs about uh, sort of mythology and, mm -hmm. um, and things like that and history, yeah. famous battles we've known and stuff like that, um, which was real different at the time. And then lots of other bands started doing it. We didn't really see any need to change because we've never been a band to change just for change's sake. Um, but with some time off and, um, you know, living in the real world, not living out of a tour bus, right. it's like, hang on, this is 1992 and... and, and it's like the world seems to be slowly falling apart. If it's not like the acid rain and the ozone layer, it's like your sex life or everything else. It's, there's no part of, of being a person now where some bad stuff isn't going to happen to you at some, at some point, potentially. It's like everything is really coming up. It's scary yeah. stuff going on. Yeah. And so we thought that, well, you know, the, the, the record... You know, there's not too much. There's not too many. You know, cheerier. Oh, exactly. Everything's <laughs> right. nice and wonderful. Well, there's not a lot of cheery stuff Gosh, going on, right? You know, right. you know. Well, they're giving me the rap. I know you've got to go real quickly, though. Let me say for everybody who doesn't have the record yet and has been a longtime fan of Derek's album covers, got a new artist out this time. It's sort of yeah. a new look of Eddie, right? Yeah. Um, the, what we did was we just said, uh, look, we we, we want to get a real you know, evil-looking, menacing, nasty, rip your head off, reach for the puke bag, Eddie, right. on the right. on the front. And, um, yeah, it worked. And yeah. so uh, we got... We, we put three artists out. We said, hey, you each have a shot at it, and the best one is is going to go on the cover. So Derek still works for yeah. us. This is the artist. He, right. draw, he draws all the Maiden stuff for years and years right. and years. And he still works. He's still making, like, really hideous uh, creations. Yeah. Um, so they'll be surfacing and, and, on other stuff. And Eddie's out on the road with you this time. Oh, as you oh okay. the best monster on the planet! Really? Oh, oh yeah, he's ten foot, ten foot Oreo cookies. <laughs> you know? oh. Excellent, man. Well, thanks, um, thanks so much for stopping by. We'll catch you on Headbangers tomorrow night, 11 p.m. And um, I know there's a lot of, a lot of days still left.
on the tour. Hello. Nice to meet you. How are you? Nice to see I'm you. Fine. Hi, boys and girls. <laughs> We were wondering if you have a special ritual before every show starts. Is there something well, that's special? A bit, that's a very personal question. You know? I don't know whether I can answer that on air in front of all these people. Uh, no, not really. Uh, we just, we get a little bit lighter. You know, uh, just, uh, no, not really. Uh, I know some bands carry, carry on and sort of do lots of weird and wonderful things, but we just kind of get dressed, we tell a few jokes insult one another from the night before a show, like, you messed up, you did this, you know, <laughs> don't do it <that> again. <laughs> do you find there's a special relationship between you and the public of Montreal? Oh, most definitely, yeah. I, I remember last year's show, uh, when we came here and that, uh, the Gulf War started. That night, we were walking on stage, actually, was when we found out. And But, I mean, it, well, it's not special from that point of view, but uh, I've always enjoyed coming to Montreal. The fans here of, uh, I think, perhaps, one of the the best cities in Canada for supporting made one of the best. I mean, uh, Ottawa was really good and uh, Quebec, but uh, here there's just something special for us when we come in. And I've had a great time because it's summertime here. And this your country, by the way, is absolutely wonderful. In the winter, well, you know, it's it's wicked. Uh, so, uh, but it's beautiful. I've had a great time. Here. How do you feel about the last album? Do you find it's heavier or softer? It's a lot more heavier. It's positive. There's a lot of really constructed songs in this album. I mean, when I say constructed, I mean the lyrical contents. It's, there's, there's, like, it's, it's, it's telling a little story in each song, you know. There's, I mean, here, here to, from here to eternity is just a tongue-in-cheek sort of uh, fairy tale, but, um, you know, it's really cracking out. So I'm really excited about this album. Thank you. Very well. Thank nice you very to meet much. you, Nico. Thank you. It's my pleasure. See you all soon. Would you say the feeling is the same every time you're about to release a new record? Yeah, pretty much so, because uh, you, you really want to, you know, just obviously write the best songs you can. So we tend to write under pressure. We usually allow ourselves like a six-week period of writing. And um, so in that sense, since the Number of the Beast album, um, the process of writing and recording has been pretty, pretty similar. Do you feel the same satisfaction over this one as you did for example? Yeah, you always feel satisfaction when you've just finished an album. I mean, it's, you, you can't wait to play it to people, you know. It's always that way. Um, and but you can't be like totally objective about it until a few months later because then you live with the album more and you play the songs live and you see how they stand up against other songs. Um, but obviously after you've just finished out an album, you obviously, you know, you, you, you tend to think it's the best thing you've done because it's fresh and exciting and, and uh, it's new and everything else. So um, I think, you know, like maybe in a year's time I'll be more objective and compare it more to the other albums really. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a very strong album, you know, I mean, I think all the albums we've done have been very strong. I mean, the songs, the bottom line is the songs. Fear of the Dark, to me, seems to be a little more sinister than, than Maiden has been for a while. It, it has this evilness a little bit over it that disappeared for a while, I think. Um, I don't know if it's really evil. Sinister, I'd agree, sinister, eerie, perhaps, but I don't know about evil. Um, I think the song itself just uh, conjured up sort of um, weird sort of, you know, imagery for me to want to write about that. Um, and some of the other songs have got a very strong mood on, like Afraid to Shoot Strangers, it's very moody. But there's so many different things happening on the album, so varied, you couldn't really take one song off the album and say that's representative of the album. Um, and I think that's probably because there's like four different songwriters, different collaborations going on, like with Yannick coming in the band and everything, and writing stuff, and um, it's, some of it's quite different. Um, Fear is the key? Doesn't that yeah. sound like Gillen a lot? I mean, Bruce almost um, sounds like Ian singing. Yeah, there is one bit in the middle where um, he, he does a scream which sounds really like Gillen. Yeah. But then the scream after that is a bit like Robert Plant. So, I mean, the actual song itself, to me, reminds me, you know, the feel of it reminds me of, uh, of Zeppelin. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the thing is, anyway, there has been songs in the past where Bruce has, has reminded me of Gillen because he's, I mean, he's a big Gillen fan anyway. Uh, oh, I know that. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's natural that that would come out every now and again. Um, I mean, Yannick is, you know, is influenced by a lot of people. I think on this album in particular, there's, there's bits of it, you know, that, you know, you can tell he's Blackmore influence and also Jeff Beck. Um, so, you know, when all these influences come out, you know, they pop up once in a while, you know. What type of credit <coughs> would you put on Yannick as a new member of the band now, when you've worked with him for some time now and you started to write songs? Um, well, definitely, I think he's a big asset to the band, for sure. I mean, when he came into the band, first of all, his enthusiasm alone was like, you know, worth its weight in gold. 
And then obviously on stage and everything, you know, his antics on stage. And, and the bottom line is he's a good player anyway, and a, and a good good bloke as well. And um, but now, I mean, it, you know, we've, he's, he's proved that he can really write good songs too. Now, bands don't come any bigger, any louder, or any meaner than this band here. Two guys next to me. Oh, look, I'm talking about you. <laughs> this is Bruce Dickinson. Dave Murray from Iron Maiden. Nice to see you. And you're back with Be Quick or Be Dead, yeah. which, as we speak, is riding extremely high in the British UK singles charts, isn't it? That's right, number two. Yeah, number two as we speak. A surprise or not? Uh, well, we thought it was going to go, obviously, in, in quite high because we've got loads and loads of fans out there. And uh, it was touch and go, really, whether it was going to go in, you know, three, two or one. And it ended up number two. It's, it's very good, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's most, pretty good. The only most way you can <laughs> now, now, what is it about mainly you think has kept people's imaginations for so long? Because a lot of bands have started when you started, have now faded away. Um, well, I think we've always we've never we've never crapped on our fans in terms of uh, doing like really gross sort of like sellouts to you know somebody to, to to America or to different you know to different sort of commercial pressures. Really, I mean, obviously. You know, we, we, we're selling records and we're doing gigs and everything. So I mean, you know, obviously, some, obviously, because if we're making money out of it and other people are making money out of it and so on and so forth. But even within all that thing, you can still be uh, true to what you want to do. The record company, bless them, didn't hear the record we'd made until uh, the day after it was cut. The album, I mean, the album is 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 so amazing to listen to. And when we'd done it. And, and finished it all and put it all to bed. We had the B-sides to do, and it was just like, I mean, if we'd been had like serious B-sides, it would have been such a downer, because you'd know you're doing something second best, you know, and, and how do you work hard at doing something second best? Yeah. Also, absolutely. in the past, we've always done, as what Bruce said, we do we concentrate 100% on the album, and when it does come to B-sides, you're pretty much sat, so it's like, we, we tend to do a lot of cover songs, you know, and whereas this time, we've done a couple of, like, blues, rock stuff that we just actually jammed, you know. As previously reported on Headbangers Ball, May the 11th will see the release of Iron Maiden's brand new studio album, Fear of the Dark. The album marks a number of changes and firsts for the band. Founder member Steve Harris gets a co-production credit for the first time, along with longtime Maiden collaborator Martin Birch. Although Harris has always been involved in the overall sound of Iron Maiden, this is the first time he's been involved in every single aspect of the recording process. Secondly, Fear of the Dark is the first Maiden album recorded at Steve Harris's newly built Barnyard Studio in Essex. Although No Prayer for the Dying was recorded in the barn on a mobile studio, the building has since undergone some extensive alteration work, which saw the installation of a state-of-the-art recording studio. And thirdly, Fear of the Dark is the first Maiden album to feature the songwriting talents of newest member, guitarist Yannick Gares, who collaborated on five tracks. Founder member guitarist Dave Murray also doubled his normal songwriting input by contributing to two tracks, with all other songwriting duties being handled by Steve Harris and vocalist Bruce Dickinson. The last record we did, um, No Prayer for the Dying, uh, was done in this same barn, except at that time it was still a barn, and we used a mobile uh, recording studio. To, to record it. Uh, it was a lot of fun, it was done very quickly um, and I think we might have got carried away with the enthusiasm. I think there's tons of energy on the record but some of the sonic quality is a bit agricultural, shall we say, every now and again. Uh, it doesn't mean that I think we, we regret doing it because it, I think it was the right thing to do at the time and we, we went out and did a tour where it was just sort of like t-shirt and jeans and you know no huge stage sets and we just stripped everything down and said let's get back to bare bones. This one we're trying to put some some bit more muscle on those bones and to that uh, end we've built a complete recording studio with digital and Neve desks and all the best gear on the planet and we've spent a lot longer um, getting sounds that we think match up to the power of the songs and the power of the riffs and things like that. I think that's one one reason perhaps why um, sometimes some people have been a bit loath to play us on the radio every now and again is that uh, 
perhaps certain ones of the teams don't sound as good on the radio as they could do. Um, which is not saying that we're going to, we're trying to make radio type music, uh, not not with uh, an album title like Fear of the Dark and uh, uh, songs like Be Quick or Be Dead, which is the first single. It's not quite a speed metal or a thrash metal track, but it's 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 a, a pretty up tempo sort of song, and uh, it hasn't got any here. Uh, there's not a lush harmony in sight, you know, and it's also it's fairly the lyrics are. Um, fairly explicit about uh, you know fat capitalist bastards you know <laughs> ripping everybody off like the Robert Maxwells and all those sorts of people um, and be quick or be dead it's, which is it's actually not a reference to him dying but it's uh, it's more a reference to the state that uh, what a rotten sort of thing it must be to be you know 16 or 17 right now and to look at a world which seems to be stuck in permanent depression and recession and all the rest of it, um, with all the uncertainties that's going on, and there just seems to be a lot of fat men with big cigars getting away with criminal acts and getting shoved in jail for six months and having their wrists slapped, you know. And uh, I think a lot of kids must be thinking, you know, well, you know, th th there has to be a way out of this, and. Uh, the song is sort of saying, well, the way out of it is that you've got to sort of think quick on your feet and be smarter than these people if you're going to swim in the same river. And uh, if you want to get your own ideas and your own ideals and your own things across, you've got to be able to beat them at their own game. We did the last album here with a mobile, so we thought we might as well actually build a control room and uh, so we do it, you know, probably a mix here as well, so, we, you know, a lot of albums we've done in the past we've actually recorded somewhere and then gone somewhere else to mix and it's a bit of an upheaval when you spend like ages setting up the uh, sounds again and everything for the mix so we just thought we'd be really good to do it here and uh, this is where we rehearse and everything anyway really good sound here so just decided to go to the Org and uh, put the uh, recording uh, you know actual room in you know well we actually designed the studio pretty much as we were going along we knew roughly what we wanted to do but with such an old building to start, you've got to be very careful because uh, in, in case the thing falls down, if you start building onto it or whatever. But so we actually built the thing sort of uh, internally under its own support and everything. Uh, so we didn't actually touch anything structurally to the outer building. Um, but we were doing things as we went along, really, and just testing things out. Um, you know, soundproofing-wise, we actually just sort of did bits and then added bits onto it. And so it took a long time to do, but it's been worth it. Well worth it. It's a very strong album and the songs are really, really strong, really excited about them. And I think it's the best sound we've ever had, which is great, obviously, for me being, you know, in the, the new studio and all that stuff. Um, I think it's the biggest sounding album we've had, you know, the actual drum sounds are really big and everything. And uh, I just can't wait to play it to people, really. For me, this is the best album that I've ever been involved in. Purely, it's, it's a mature album, the songs, song-wise, and I, I think the playing on it is it's phenomenal. From everybody, it's been great. A lot of the the tracks actually will lend themselves really good in you know live performance because they're really up, a lot of them real up tempo, straight ahead sort of stuff. You know where you can really you can really let go on them, and uh, I think they're going to come across really powerful. Yeah, a lot of the songs really you know I mean most of the songs we write uh, tend to be written for live pretty much anyway. Um, there's one song on it, a really different song, "Wasted well, Love," which Yannick and Bruce wrote. Which, although it's a ballady type of thing, which we haven't really done before, I think it, you know I can really imagine it playing it live. It's, uh, you know, I mean most of the stuff actually. I don't think there's, there's hardly any songs on there I would would think we, we wouldn't really be able to do live or wouldn't work as a live song. The dark so it's just a, basically you know if you come in one, one night and you know all the lights are out and you're fiddling around for the switch and can't find it and just feeling a bit uh, sort of strange, imagining maybe something's in the corner of the room or something looking at you or whatever. I'm sure people have had that sort of feeling whether they've been drunk or not or whatever. And, uh, yeah, it's just all about that sort of uh, eerie sort of stuff, really. Um, just, you know, being scared to sort of uh, walk when you're own in a dark room. Steve writes a lot of songs about uh, phobias, things like that. And um, I think it's... It, it, uh, it, I don't know whether it's from personal experience, because uh, he, wrote, he wrote that particular tune, he wrote the, the, the words to that song, so... Um, uh, he wrote it from the point of view of a guy who's uh, uh, wandering through the park and 
the lights start to go down and he starts feeling a little odd, touch of the Jekyll and Hyde's. Um, and uh, whether or not it's uh, from personal experience, again, I don't know, I can't say. Um, having never been a flasher in a park or, uh, or you know, walking sex crime or, you know, axe murder waiting to happen. Uh, there, there's more, more, more than a hint that it might be that this chap wandering through the park, something strange happens to him when it's dark. The inspiration behind the album, well, it's a, a, a set of songs that we want to go out and try and... Um, change the world with no no it's uh it's a bunch of rock and roll tunes that uh, uh re that represent iron maiden